Yep, it'd be another day. <laughs> yeah. All right, probably a long video. Piero, fuck, made some more garbage videos. Um, sort of related to a, a whole bunch of subjects that have been going on. I mean, everything's sort of related. So I'm going to be dealing with these words, freedom and responsibility again. Uh, but it relates to this free will crap, this, this idea of will. Um, and uh, how you have conversation and where, where's the base camp? <laughs> so these are, if you've watched the mystic videos in conference, you'll understand what I just said. If you didn't, you know, well, anyway, uh, play along just for the hell of it. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Biggest irritant I have with Pyro, now that I think about it, is this idea that he has no, he, he will concede something and the next day it's over, it's gone. That concession has been uh, uh, exploded. Um, you go through this, this trouble of having conversation with him, and, and it's, it's just so, it's such a waste of time, uh, because you never establish the base camp. Uh, the next day he'll just, go, go, just, just drive right the fuck over what was established as an agreeable premise. Uh, so it's just so toxic to any kind of fruitful or productive conversation, in my opinion. Um, it's, it's always going to be dead ends. We've been over this will crap. And we've, uh, we established a long time ago, six months ago, a year ago, uh, that there's a difference between having a will, the fact that your brain will, <laughs> will decide, it will make decisions. Uh, you will go left or right, um, and, you're, and you will feel it as a will. Like, I have a will to go this way. I have a will to do that. Uh, but the issue of free is where it collapses. Um, so yeah, and so, but now he's kind of just blowing that up again and just ignoring that conversation. The fact that we have different programs running inside of us, that there is no real us, that there's a compete, a, a competing agendas. They battle it out in our subconscious and whoever wins becomes who we, uh, celebrate. Yay. That's who I am. I'm the guy who's going to do the good thing today. And then we feel guilty if we chose to be uh, you know, selfish. Because in hindsight, we'll say, oh, that chocolate cake I stole, yeah, it gave me a stomach ache. So now I regret it. <laughs> yeah, we don't regret the thief, the, the, the stealing. We only regret because it didn't turn out as well as we thought it would. Uh, you know, it wasn't a, a match made in heaven after all. Uh, you know, so we come up with a rationalization. And, uh, but anyway, I don't want to get into all that crap. So anyway, they brought up this uh, determinism thing, and some guy called, uh, some guy who's, you know, sometimes on, sometimes off. I mean, I really like him, sometimes I really hate him, in terms of his comments. Uh, Dinah Cat loves me. Um, so anyway, Pyro uh, linked to this guy's video, and so I watched a few minutes of it. And uh, he was using um, radioactivity uh, as a... a uh, evidence of randomness. I mean, at least he was reading from Wikipedia as if that was one of these open-ended curiosities that we haven't explained. But we know it's not random. We know it's not unrelated to cause and effect. I mean, you come up with a whole bunch of models of the interior uh, of these heavy elements that are radioactive. They have a huge number of electrons flying around. Uh, and what's basically happening is that you can imagine our solar system just a little bit more crowded. And every now and then, every 10 million years, every 10 billion years, a comet will hit an Earth and smash it to bits, and little pieces will fly off. Uh, so we could call that radioactivity, some sort of event like that, a one in a billion year event. And all these atoms are inside uh, of this uh, material, and they're all decaying the same way. They're all having one in a billion year events. And so if you have a billion of them, you have an event every day. <laughs> yeah, it just works out that way. So, I mean, if I have a bunch of guys sitting on the ground with a gun and they all shoot straight up in the air, uh, and they're, say, a little bit apart from each other, farther enough not to shoot each other, and they just keep shooting bullets up in the air, one a day, and I have a million of them. Well, probably one day will actually accomplish the feat of shooting the bullet up and having it land on their own head. <sighs> yeah. And so some days three of them will go. <laughs> you know, some days none. 
uh, yeah, that's the way it'll work out. But it's not going to be random. There is cause and effect. So it's just, just all kind of bullshit. Uh, you know, when a comet hits the Earth, it didn't come from nowhere. It has a huge, long history of its own. The Earth has a huge, long history of its own. And the paths were established, you know, billions and billions of years ago. And so the inevitable event will take place. Uh, so anyway, it's just irritating. Randomness is just a perception based on your, your inability to frame a circumstance. Okay, you cannot understand the relationship between billions of objects <laughs> okay in, in a bucket it's way too complicated uh, but there isn't anything spontaneous taking place and there's nothing random so anyway fuck that shit but obviously by our perception it's going to look random because we're on this very slow time scale whoa we're moving really slow where the speed of light is moving very fast <laughs> really really fast and so zillions of things can happen while the speed of light is speed of lighting uh, in each middle in each little second there is room for whole complex systems to be created and collapse uh, that's just the reality a second is a huge amount of time but we just don't know it because we're big slow and clunky uh, but there's no random Fuckers. All right. Now, even if there was, we've been through this argument. Randomness would do nothing to create anything called free will. So it'd be absolutely useless. Now, I've made this video before at least four times, five times. There is nothing. Freedom is an idiotic word. Can we establish this as a premise? Freedom is a word invented by people who were just making relative comparisons. They were saying, hey, I'm not in a cage, uh, I, I, therefore I'm free. Uh, that's all. Okay? Freedom is the removal of encumbrance. Okay, it's the absence of encumbrance. It is not anything in and of itself. It is made by an encumbrance. <laughs> the encumbrance defines what freedom you have, what encumbrances exist. I'm obviously my will. I'm not free to be a concert pianist. Just not, it just can't happen, all right? It just can't. I have to learn how to be one. I can't just right now say, I'm going to, no, I can't. I'm going to recite uh, the speech that uh, Theodore Bunglefung gave at the uh, Kiwanis meeting in 1938. I can't do it, all right? <laughs> it's not there. I haven't been exposed to it. I haven't learned it. Uh, there's, it's not gonna happen. So obviously I have freedom oh, as limited by my exposure and my experience. That's just a fact. Now let's figure out whether my exposure and experience has some, as, a, as if there's a me in here that's gonna be free to choose. There is no me. Me is what happens. Me is the guy, the program that wins. So I could walk down this trail 500 times, uh, meet a girl. Now each time, I'll react a little subtly different. Some days I'll be feeling confident because I have a good mood. Some days I'll be feeling insecure and I don't feel well. So I'll just like, oh yeah, hey, hey, walk by. And then other days I'm gonna feel like maybe it's worth trying and blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna have different software, different programs in my head are gonna be stronger or weaker on any given day. And that will decide what my end behavior will be. Now, it'll have nothing to do with will. It will just have to do with circumstance, period. And uh, the coalescing, the mood, the rumble, the vibration, uh, uh, the nuance of the, uh, where the trains are inside my brain at that particular moment. But I will have no freedom. The trains are on tracks. Uh, the whole thing is regulated by my life experience, my genetic initial disposition, all of these things have determined who I am, what I will say, how I will say it. Uh, and so this is just, this conversation is beneath uh, the time it has to be spent arguing. Uh, it's just, it's, it's inane to have to go over and over this. This is a, a rock solid, airtight 
uh, description of our circumstance. You have no freedom because there is no such thing as freedom. And secondly, there's no fucking such thing as you. <laughs> okay, you're a brain. Your brain subconsciously defines you. And it doesn't do it by, I'm going to sit here and think about it. And I'm going to blah, 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 blah. There's no little you inside of you. Can, can, you, can we at least agree on that? There's no little you inside your head being you. There's your experience. And your experience, just like the sentence I just spoke, comes from your subconscious. It arises through you. And you say, wow, I was pretty interesting just now. And uh, you, you re-experience yourself. Uh, and all of that causes and affects your brain and creates the next sentence you utter. Um, that's it. It's cause and fucking effect. It's not free, and it's not a you. Uh, all right. Now, there was a related subject. Oh, yeah, back to this idea of establishing a base camp. Um, you know, some sort of foundation for uh, how this shit is going to be discussed, or um, the context. And so I did want to talk about, this might be unrelated to this, well, we'll see. Uh, so, so Nick has, uh, he made a response video, not really explaining still, how exactly um, the fact that uh, consciousness, uh, you know, is a, an effect. It's a nuance of arrangement. Um, and how somehow that nuance isn't... Um, substantially different. Again, he's just still saying rock is rock, chemistry is chemistry. And it's just not. There is a difference, a distinction. Uh, and I think a meaningful one. There you go. Hello. Uh, so you can't just ignore the difference. Uh, and uh, you have to account for it. I mean, I, I would really, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm going to push it a little. This, this base camp of his just because I would really love to be able to live there. I would really love to be able to believe that the suffering on this planet doesn't matter. That every little drop of it doesn't matter. That somehow, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, I can't, I, I can't where, I'm, where I'm from, I can't see how that's possible. It's the only thing that does matter. The matter doesn't matter. The chemistry doesn't matter. The physics doesn't matter. This thing created out of it, uh, this feeling thing, that matters. That's the whole value in the universe. Everything else is completely irrelevant and nonsensical except for how it affects the feeling things. So if it makes an extra five billion feeling things that suffer, that matters. That's something that has value eternal, has meaning eternal to the, even the existence of the universe. Uh, the universe is irrelevant except for the value of those, the condition of those feeling things. Uh, so I'm, I'm basically just re-asking the same question, I guess. It sounds like I'm making the same video. I mean, I just don't know how you do this base camp thing. I tried to make a distinction between illusion and delusion. We have a delusion of free will in that we, we sense it, but it's completely made up. It's not even, it's not based on anything. As comfort support might have said, uh, illusions are um, distortions uh, of reality. Um, they're not figments of reality. Uh, kind of a thing. They're add-ons, they're subtractions, bending or twistings, <laughs> misinterpretations, where a delusion is just an outright lie. Free will is a lie. First, because it's made out of words that don't exist in reality. And, uh, yeah, so that's enough said on that. <laughs> yeah, end of that one. Um, but there's this distinction. I mean, I would argue that sensation is, a, is an illusion. 
our brain projects on a non-existent screen inside of our head. They are, uh, it's based on something. There's a real arrangement, it's a real event, but it's, um, there's no way to image it. There's no way to describe the function. It just happens because of that circumstantial arrangement. Uh, so it's an illusion. Suffering is an illusion. Pleasure is an illusion. Desire is an illusion. Uh, but they're not delusions. They're not nothing. They're not made up crap. They're not bullshit. Uh, but Nick kind of went back to, they're all delusions. Um, and I just, I can't, I, like I said, I'd like to be able to believe that. I would really love to uh, escape my uh, fear and uh, dread and horror and sadness and sickness and uh, uh, because I do value, because I see what is the production of more of this red number, more of this obnoxious noise, more of this uh, conscious screaming uh, taking place in the universe. And uh, I can't help but value it uh, from my base camp. My base camp just doesn't make it not mean something. Again, even if there's no witness, even if there's no contemplation, uh, if there's a cat <laughs> smashed under a log in pain, it doesn't need a witness to have a purely absolute negative quality. Yeah. All right, fighting through it. Okay. Up. So, yep, another video dude. Uh, sorry, a little blending of subjects trying to, you know, so much crap to respond to. I could be here forever. Just a lot of not very good videos out there. Uh, so anyway, uh, till the next time. <sighs> Getting hot. Really hasn't been a very hot summer though. Still, it's, it's, you know, we haven't hit 90 yet. This is bullshit. <sighs> Middle of July. Could be like 100 degrees by now. So anyway, until next time.